Well, could you start off by introducing yourselves again to our site visitors at Pop Culture Madness? My name is Andy Grammer. What's going on? Great. Well, thank you so much for joining me again. Yeah. And, you know, we're a little ways into this tour with Parachute. How's it going? It is unbelievable. Best friends, one of some of my favorite music. It's really just a blast. That's awesome. I was just talking to the guys from Parachute, and they yeah. were like, Andy is one of our favorite people to tour with. Like, it's yeah. so fun. So. It, really is, it really is fun. So this tour is going to take you about till mid-May. What are your plans yeah. for the rest of the summer? The rest of the summer is album two. Let's do this. Let's make it happen. How far along in the process are you? I think I've probably written about a third of the songs at this point. Oh, okay. And uh, just writing a lot more, getting more into uh, refining and figuring out exactly what's going to make that second album be as good as it needs to be. Nice. Can you tease us a little bit on the direction that you're going? Or is you it know, it's funny. I really don't have any crazy direction. Okay. I just have, like, are they great songs? I'm trying to get another 12 great songs. And uh, that's a battle. So do you have anything left over from the first album? That um, no, I think over? most of it will probably be just new stuff that okay. uh, is hopefully really good. Nice. So, I mean, I think we caught up with you, gosh, maybe it was a year and a half ago or more, like, here in Philly. So can you fill us in? Well, it seems like you've been a pretty busy guy in between. Yeah, it's mostly touring, you know, just rolling around. I saw you with, who, who was I playing with at that point? Was that a headline tour? Yeah. Yeah, so after that, uh, I did Colby Calais and Gavin DeGraw, and then I did, uh, then went out with Train for most of the summer, wow. last summer, so I was just rolling around a lot. It's been awesome. So what are some of your survival tips on the road? Tips for survival on the road. <laughs> um, just get sleep wherever you can. When you guys leave, I'll probably lay on this couch for a while. <laughs> it makes sense, though. Yeah, any, any 10 minute, 20, 30 minute interval, just get your sleep. Oh, I can imagine. So, I mean, how happy are you with the overall evolution of your music, like, up until this point? I mean, it's just that the success of, you know, Keep Your Head Up and Fine By Me has been, you know, yeah. wonderfully successful. Like, how happy are you with that? Really. I'm really blessed and lucky, you know, to, to be able to do this for a living is amazing. Plus to be off album cycle and be able to tour is pretty cool. So you know that it's not just something that's hitting right now. Right. We don't have anything out right now and we're pretty much back, you know, selling out a lot of these rooms. It's, it's really, really exciting. I mean, I know that Keep Your Head Up is always a go-to song for yeah. me. You know, when I'm stressed, when I'm feeling down, you know, it's like, okay, it will get better. I get it. Yeah. You know, and you know, were you ever surprised that as many people, like, took to it as yeah, they of did. Of course. I mean, you, you, it's this weird balance of hoping that something like that happens and then just being amazed that, that it's gone this way. It's really cool. What I love is the level of honesty within your music. Is it is it hard to put a lot of yourself out there? Yeah, but I think that's what makes it good. That's a special sauce. Because, mm -hmm. you know, from point of view, like, what's your point of view? I think that's what makes music really good. Absolutely. I think that fans can tell whether an artist is genuine or not. Yeah. You know, a lot of bands tend to forget that when things sound so cookie cutter and generic yeah. so yeah. you know personally I look at music as a universal language that yeah. we can all speak and understand is there anything in particular you hope your music will say to listeners I just hope that it, uh, it connects with them in a way that makes them feel like someone else is feeling different and that's, that's they start, then it feels really good oh, like when that, that moment when you're listening to a song and you're like ah yes I felt that I know that that's when you start to really make a bond with the artist. Oh, absolutely. I think that the creation process can be just as therapeutic to the artist yeah. as it can be, you know, for the listener on the other side of the spectrum. <laughs> so, you know, I know that you have a little bit of background in acting and things. How, how does that play into the music process or even your stage presence? I mean, I don't know. I, I would love to get into acting. I, it's very, very hard. I, don't, I definitely know it's not just like, oh, just go do it. It's like a serious skill that uh, at some point in my life I'd love to put a little more time into. I, have, I, I mean, I went, I did a little bit of acting in college, but um, it's it's hard. I, I right now know how to get on stage in front of a bunch of people with a guitar and, and make some magic occur, hopefully, and I don't know how to do that quite yet. <laughs> Just by myself saying words. So. I'd love to learn how to do it. Though. So what kind of dream role would you like to tackle if you could pick one? Oh, I honestly don't even know. I would just love to, you know, just do something well in acting. That's my goal. That'd be fun. So being that you, you know, you kind of started with music and you um, actually were busking in Santa Monica to start out and yep. everything, How, you know, what advice do you have to aspiring musicians that are trying to get out there, like right now? Yeah. I would 
My advice is play for people who don't have anything invested in you, like your family or your friends. See if they see if they like it. If they don't, if your family and friends like it, it's irrelevant. It's got to be people that you don't know. And then uh, also just be cool to put your heart out there and have it be smashed on a regular basis. That's like what it is. How does the negative uh, how does the negative criticism affect you? I think you have to be really. It's a really delicate thing because you have to let some of it come in to to get better. But if you let too much of it come in, that'll actually stop you from doing what you're doing, then that's too much. So you have to be your own little uh, bouncer of negativity. When it comes to the door, you're like, are, are you going to be cool? <laughs> I'll let you in to like help shape who I'm going to be, but I can't have you just come throwing crap around and like and taking me down. You know? Right. I mean, there's the other side of things, too. Like, I know that so many artists feel boxed into one particular category, mm -hmm. and, you know, I think your music has, a, in my opinion, has a mass appeal. I mean, you've got some rock fans that could be into it, pop fans that could be into it, you know, even borderline like R&B. Yeah. Like, you know, how would you best describe it to a first-time listener? I would say it's a guy who loves piano rock, uh, grew up mostly listening to hip-hop, and, uh, and loved his guitar. Is there anything you think that's misunderstood about you? Um. I don't think I'm misunderstood. I think people pretty much perceive me as a happy guy. Um, I think what makes the word happy uh, cool is if you are someone who's been through a ton of shit and then you say you're happy. Now it's cool. Yeah. If you just say you're happy, it's like an airy fairy thing. Then happy can be like a silly word, but like you know, to talk to someone who's been through a bunch of crap and then still says he's happy, that's like. Oh, yeah, no doubt. I mean, I think that's the true definition of it. And yeah. it's, you know, coming out on the other side with exactly. more obstacles, exactly. and then you can truly go, yes, I've accomplished exactly. this. <laughs> so, you know, other than this tour and, and possibly, you know, work on the album, are there any other goals for 2013? Um, I mean, that's a pretty big goal. If I can get that done, I'll be good. <laughs> the goal is always, can you get good songs? And I just think that's really hard to do. Really, really hard to do. I mean, it's maybe it's not for other people, but for me to get really quality songs that I'm willing to stand in front of all these fans that I've already developed and be like, I feel comfortable. I think I've done my job. Here you go. That's I take a lot of pride in that. So if I can get that done this year, that'll be good. So what's the writing process like for you? What generally comes first? Um, either way, sometimes I'll have a chord progression that I think is really cool, or a melody, or a concept. You know, I rarely just sit down and write all the lyrics out. Yeah. Usually it's like a concept, and then I get a melody and start putting it together. Okay. Is there anybody that you'd like to tour with that you haven't yet? Every, I mean, honestly, everybody. I'm open to everything right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm just like, tour, the fa I, honestly, it's parachute. That's my favorite. I, I want, I want to tour a parachute. Oh, I'm living my dream. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I want to thank you for yeah, taking for, a few minutes to speak with me. Good I appreciate it. Uh, any final message or comments? Hit me up on Twitter at Andy Grammer. And uh, I try to respond as much as I can, so just come say what's up. That's great. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks so much, guys.